All right, hello everyone. Welcome to Blending Data Sources, a Lyft case study. Um, I'm Mara Jenison Openchain. I work for Knowledge Enterprise Analytics. Knowledge Enterprise is one of the three enterprises at ESU, the other two being Academic Enterprise and Learning Enterprise. In KE Analytics, um, we are responsible for research and sponsored reporting for the university. This includes proposals, awards, and research expenditures. We also work with bibliometric data and expert profiling data. Here you can see some fun things about me. <laughs> and I was excited to learn that my colleague, Jamie, also plays trumpet. <laughs> so Jamie, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Jamie Burns. I also work in Knowledge Enterprise. Um, I, however, work on our research development team. And so our research development team works with ASU faculty and staff and just leaders generally to improve funding success and grow research at ASU. Awesome. So this session, I think when we submitted the proposal originally, we said this would be primarily for data citizens and data apprentices. Um, that is still true, but we I also wanted to do a quick demo of the Tableau workbook setup itself. So that would be more appropriate for your data knights and data wizards. Um, so Jamie's content will be more appropriate towards these um, more entry level uh, personas. And then my content will be more geared towards the, the late, later two. All right, and here is our agenda today. Um, Jamie will provide an overview of the LIFT initiative as well as some insights and outcomes of this dashboarding project. And then I will review data privacy, access, best practices, preparation and workbook setup for this dashboard. We'll have time for Q&A at the end, but if you have any questions before then, feel free to send them in the chat. If we don't see them right away, we'll look through them at the end to make sure we answer them all. All right, Jamie. Thank you, Mara. So this past year, I had the privilege of working with LIFT. LIFT is an acronym for Listen, Invest, Facilitate, Teach. And LIFT was formed by ASU President Dr. Michael Crow to accelerate meaningful change around issues of social justice, both here at ASU as well as nationally. And LIFT was tasked with some specific objectives that were sourced from the ASU community by Dr. Crow. And the goal of LIFT is to enhance the diversity, growth, and opportunity for Black undergraduate and graduate students, faculty, and staff at ASU. And so while LIFT is tasked with a particular focus on Black and African-American advancements, changes to you know, things like academic offerings, community services, and just broad advancements overall are meant to benefit all at ASU. Um, and so we'll talk about how this dashboard was created and why it served LIFT's needs. And I've included at the bottom of the screen a link to the president's commitment if you'd like to learn more about LIFT. Next slide, please. So again, LIFT is a university-wide effort that was launched you know, to address social transformation really in the spirit of ASU's charter. And to do, to you know, kind of address all of these issues, LIFT committed to implementing 25 actions that are designed to support Black faculty, staff, and students. I was specifically involved with one of the actions, L3, which was Listen 3. And we sought to publish a report on the state of Black students, faculty, and staff. And, you know, as the L3 team began working on the report, one question that I posed was, what is the research portfolio look like for Black researchers at ASU. I come from a research background, I work in research development, and I thought understanding what research looks like for faculty today could help us make meaningful advancements. And so after posing that question to the L3 team and learning that it was of interest to more than just me, I emailed analytics and I was connected with Mara. And, you know, Mara and I met and worked collaboratively. And when I say collaboratively, we brainstormed collaboratively, Mara did all of the data and really cool stuff that she'll talk about today. Um, she's incredibly skilled at what she does. So she'll talk about the ins and outs of the dashboard, but I'll talk about kind of my role as a stakeholder and really as a communicator of the dashboard back to the L3 group. Uh, next slide, please. So one of the benefits, again, of working with Mara was that she was willing to brainstorm with me. And so we initially met and I kind of described the goal I was looking for, kind of the outcome that the team really needed. And then Mara was really able to clearly articulate what was possible. So she described what data was available, what data we would need to aggregate for privacy, um, and really kind of all we talked about the data challenges we might face. And so through our discussion, what we really determined was that while LIFT 
was is specifically focused on Black and African American advancement, it does have this broader goal of advancing all underrepresented groups at ASU. And so with that in mind, we brought in the scope of the dashboard because we realized that creating a dashboard that tracked research activities for all races, ethnicities, and genders uh, would have a long lasting impact. It could answer many questions for you know, anyone at ASU and it's available to all at ASU and Mara will talk to you about that um, in her section. And so kind of one of the big benefits of actively participating in the brainstorming was that I really got to like learn and understand what the dashboard was truly displaying. And so that was really crucial because then I needed to communicate that back to the L3 group. And so I was able to share kind of what the dashboard data meant, what conclusions could be drawn, as well as some of the associated challenges and then, you know, parts of the data where there were just gaps. And so, you know, for example, one of the challenges we faced was that oftentimes people identify as more than one race or ethnicity. And the HR data as it's currently collected has a checkbox for two or more races. But when that is selected by a participant responding to an HR, um, you know, informational poll, they don't have to identify which two or more races they identify with. And so we knew that some under that two or more races category may identify as Black or African American, but we would not be able to discreetly access that group. And so we kind of came back together and brainstormed and realized that that was a challenge, but it didn't deter from our overall objective. We could still kind of see broad trends for different races, ethnicities, and genders. And so keeping that in mind, if you click next, Mara, this was the dashboard, or this is the dashboard that was created. And the dashboard tracks active employees at ASU aggregated by ethnicity, showing proposals, awards, and expenditure recognition. The dashboard is filterable and sortable by fiscal year, fiscal quarter, home college, and employee classification. Uh, next slide, please. So one of the great features of the dashboard is that it not only provides the data that you saw on the first screen, but it also visually organizes the data, which I really like because it was very easy to show trends with having these really, really nice visuals. And so just as a little kind of appetizer, I wanna share a bit about what the dashboard revealed. So we saw a distinct difference between ethnicities when it came to proposals and awards. The data is categorized by rate per person. And that was really smart of Mara to do because it evens out the difference between number of faculty who have identified as one particular race or ethnicity or another. And so the data indicated an outcome showing a higher dollar rate per person among Asian and white faculty. However, it doesn't clearly identify underlying causes. So we can see a distinction, but we can't assume why a differentiation exists. To answer that question, the LIFT team has to do a bit more analysis to determine, you know, if for example, there are differences in access to resources, time commitments, or really anything that might play a role in proposal and award outcomes. Uh, next slide, please. And so while at the aggregate level, there's a large gap indicating, as you can see, that a lot of progress is still needed. When you look at particular races and ethnicities and genders, and you examine them discreetly, progress can be seen. And so displayed on the screen is the recognition for those who have identified as Black um, or African American or Hispanic and Latino. Um, and really what you can see is that both of these groups over the last 10 years have increased their recognition. And so, you know, we're seeing progress, there's still a ways to go, but this is a really good way for us to be able to track where ASU is at, where ASU has been, and hopefully change where ASU is headed. And so with that overview of the LIFT initiative and the outcomes of the work, I will hand it to Mara, who will talk about how she created the dashboard and kind of what data sources she had to blend to really be able to answer this unique question posed by LIFT. Thank you, Jamie. Okay, so um, anytime you're creating a dashboard, the first thing you want to start with is your data privacy. So there are two different sources that we're blending together for this dashboard. We're using HR data, which includes personally identifiable information and demographic data. And we're using sponsored recognition data. HR data are restricted with different permission levels. There are two HR schemas in Redshift and within these schemas, there are permission levels to help protect the data. Knowledge Enterprise also sources some HR data into our server for reporting purposes. So for this dashboard, I did not need to do a cross-server connection. 
We've recently added some sponsored data into the Redshift server. Um, here are the tables that are in the Redshift server. Um, I hope you all attended Hansa's presentation um, yesterday. I did a quick walkthrough of some of those tables. In this dashboard, I used proposal recognition, award recognition, and expenditures recognition from our data, which is updated monthly. Um, one thing to keep in mind when working with demographic or sensitive data like gender and ethnicity is to view the data in aggregate so that the data cannot be tied back to a single individual. In our query, we're including Impl ID or affiliate ID only for the purposes of cross-checking the data. The ID will not be shared in the published workbook. So uh, try not to focus on the individual, but instead focus on a group of people. <laughs> So workbook access. All ASU faculty and staff have access to the KE Analytics reports. If you've never logged into the Tableau server, you may need to request access. So you can email us at keanalytics at asu.edu. There are a few reports that are project specific or department specific reports, and these will have restricted permissions. So when you go to our website, um, you can search for the reports uh, published by our group, and this is where you'll be able to find the Lyft dashboard. You'll just type in here report title. You can type in Lyft and click apply filters, and it'll pop up in here for you to click on. So best practices when blending data sources. Whenever you're blending two data sources, your first step is to identify your primary keys and secondary keys if applicable between the two sources. In this dashboard, our main source is the employee population from the HR data source, joining into the recognition tables as our secondary data source. Our primary key in the employee data is the Impl ID, also called the affiliate ID. We will use this primary key to join into the recognition tables, which are at the grain of investigator. You'll see I have job indicator highlighted here, uh, we are limiting the employee data to primary job only by setting this indicator to equals P. This is because some employees will have second, um, secondary jobs and we don't need that data for this report. So in HR data tables, the individuals are employees and on the recognition tables, they are investigators. Since we are limiting the employee data set to one record per employee, the relationship is one to many one employee to many recognition results. Um, on the recognition tables, you will have multiple results for one proposal number or one award number, which is why we will not be using it as a primary key this year. Instead, we are using uh, the investigator affiliate ID. That is the, the connector here, and that will become the foreign key. Another best practice is to account for null values. In this report, um, we're including all employees in our selected employee classifications, whether or not they have recognition. Since our database only includes departments and centers that have been validated in the Enterprise Research Administration System, ERA, and or have some sponsored activity, some units will return null values as the home unit for the employee. So in this case, I'm replacing the null value with their payroll unit um, so that we don't have a null. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, data preparation. So this is where the bulk of um, the magic happens really is behind the scenes, the data preparation. So the recognition tables are updated monthly and include everything up to the date that it was updated. When querying and reporting from these tables, we need to make sure to limit the results to only the data through the end of the last full month. <coughs> Pardon me, I have a bit of a scratchy throat this morning. So for example, if the data were updated on October 18th, the first 18 days of October should not be reported on as a best practice. Here you can see when creating my join, excuse me, I have these backwards here, sorry. Uh, when creating my join 
um, for, oh, I'm sorry, my join for the fiscal years, I'm limiting each to the last full month of reported data. So that's this where the date month key uh, is equal to the reporting close end of month. Um, so that limits it to the last full month of reporting. On the previous slide, I mentioned I'm limiting the employee population to only primary jobs. So in addition to that, I'm also limiting to academic professionals, faculty and administrator, and classified and university staff. This report does not include graduate research assistants, postdocs, or student workers. Here I am giving um, coded fields descriptive names that will be more meaningful to the end user. I could create another join to a dimensions table with the descriptive attributes, but if you have too many joins in your query, it starts to slow down. And as this is a live connection report, I wanted the user experience to load quickly. So this query contains approximately three case statements to replace coded fields with their descriptive names. Next, you'll want to set, uh, well, that's funny, it copied twice. I apologize for that. You'll want to set appropriate parameters in your where clause. You can see I'm limiting uh, the results to active employees only, their primary job, and then only the last 10 years of uh, sponsored data, of recognition data, excuse me. These parameters will help keep the results manageable in the data connection and meaningful for the report viewers. Once your query is ready, I always like to cross-check my data using the monthly research and sponsored projects pivot table that is published each month on our website. I do this by selecting an Impl ID um, from the first few uh, rows of results in my SQL query and enter it into my where clause, rerun the query so I get just their number. And then using that Impl ID, open the pivot table um, in Excel and filter the investigator with this ID. With the rows in the pivot table matching the query, I can then check that my numbers for recognition match. Um, so usually I like to pick someone who's, uh, who's pretty uh, out there, like uh, Josh LaBear, you know, he's the director of the Biodesign Institute. Um, so that way I, I know that he has some recognition that I can compare and make sure that the numbers match. Okay, so these are some questions that you'd ask yourself when creating a new Tableau workbook report. Which kinds of data would work best in what kind of visual visualization? So tables are generally best if you want to be able to look up specific information or if values must be reported precisely. Graphs are best for illustrating trends and making comparisons. Line graphs are used to track changes over short and long periods of time. And when smaller changes exist, line graphs are better to use than bar graphs. Line graphs can also be used to compare changes over the same period of time for more than one group, which is what we do in this workbook. The bar and the column chart can be used either way. However, the column chart is better to use in the case of making comparisons, while the bar charts are better in use cases where the data is, um, uh, the data represented is a lot or the labels are lengthy. So for example, if the name of a college is you know, 100 characters long, it's probably going to be very hard to read in a vertical um, label, a vertical bar chart label. Um, so you want to tilt the axes so you can read it across. So now I'm going to switch over to my Tableau screen, and I'm going to do a quick demo on how to set up a table, how to set up a bar chart, and how to set up a line chart. I'll also talk about the calculation that I used to create the proposal dollar rate per person and that translates into award rate per person as well. Okay, so here I am in my Tableau workbook. I'm already connected to my um, SQL query that I created for this uh, dashboard. Um, so first I'm going to set up a table and I think I'm going to do that by, let's do ethnicity. So I'm just gonna drag my dimension into my row. I timed out the connection, that's fun. Okay, so now I have my ethnicity groups here in my rows. And I'll go ahead and also drag gender as another dimension into my rows. Now you'll see each ethnicity is then broken down by the two genders that we have. There is a, a third where it's um, if someone chooses not to 
um, a select female or male, it comes up as unknown. Um, just to throw that out there. Um, okay, so now I'm going to pick, let's see, fiscal year, because that's a good uh, dimension. And so this is interesting. So right now, Tableau says fiscal year is a date, so it's going to say it's a measure. So watch what happens when I drag it to the rows. It's going to try to sum the fiscal year instead of treat it as an attribute. So to change that, because this is very you know, confusing, it doesn't mean anything for us. To change that, we're gonna drop down the filter, excuse me, the field, change it to a dimension. It's still gonna look kind of funny. So then there's one more thing we need to do. Now we need to say it is a discrete dimension. And that will then get us the breakdown of the fiscal years. So now we can see American Indian, Alaska Native, female, and all the fiscal years that we have here. We still don't have any data because we haven't dropped in our actual measures yet. So now I'm just going to take, let's see, awards count and recognition. So I'm gonna drag these here. And I'm instead of dragging to the rows like I normally would, I'm going to drag it to where the ABC is because that's going to drop it in as uh, a measure or a mark, as Tableau calls it. Okay, so here's now my award count for each year of women in this ethnicity category, and so on and so forth. And um, let's also take awards rep. So I'm also going to jump it right here. All right, and now we've got awards count and awards recognition. I'm just gonna expand these columns a little bit so you can read it a little bit better. And I'll go ahead and expand this one too. All right, that looks pretty good. So now you can see the awards count for fiscal year 12 and how much the recognition was for. Oh, keep in mind, recognition means the dollar amount that a person, an investigator was recognized for. It is not actually the total amount of the award itself. Um, so just keep that in mind. So if you're looking at award data uh, and proposal data as well, uh, recognition can get a little, um, but it has differing numbers from the actual award amount. Okay, um, so now we can see that we've got our nice table. Um, but I think it'd be really nice if we had a total at the very bottom here. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here to analysis, totals, and show, oops, show column grand totals. Is it up there? There it is. Okay. It was hiding from me. So now we have our grand total. Here's all of the award counts for all ethnicities, all genders, for all fiscal years. So 38,000 award count. And for what is that million billion four billion in award recognition over the last 10 years so that's pretty cool um keep in mind this this uh does not include postdocs or gras who do occasionally have some recognition it doesn't happen often but they do occasionally so it will be slightly smaller than um than the monthly uh pivot table just for that okay um, so that's how to set up a table. And then, of course, you can format this um, to make it uh, branded the way that you would normally do it. So now I'm going to show you how to um, set up a bar chart. And before I set up my bar chart, I'm actually going to discuss the um, awards dollar rate calculation. So this is a calculated field in Tableau. And the way I set it up, I'm going to describe to show you. It is the sum of the recognition, award recognition, divided by the distinct count of employee ID. And that is why I left the employee ID in the query, um, because we're not actually publishing the ID itself, but we need the count of people um, in order to get this, this dollar rate, so the rate per person. Um, so it's really easy to create these calculated fields. I'm just going to go to awards rec dollars, and I'm going to go create calculated field. It's going to just dump the field in here, but we, we're going to go ahead and uh, call it something. So I'm going to call it rate example. And all you're going to do is the, the calculation I just showed you. So sum 
of award rec dollars, parentheses, divided by the distinct count. So that's count D. And it shows you here, um, if you hover over the expression, it will tell you what, what each um, calculation expression means. Count D of the employee ID. Oops, employee ID. And that will get you the distinct count of people. So now we've got some award rec divided by count D. Okay. And just to make sure that these two are the same, I'm going to take my award rates, drop it in here. Should just give me a number. Yep. And I'm going to take my rate example and also drop it in here into my marks. And let's see. Yep, yeah, they're the same. So the rate is now calculated. Now, the cool thing about calculated fields is because um, they are a calculation and not just a number. Um, if they will then change when you start to put in your, your, your rows and your columns, um, just like a pivot table. So um, now that I have my rate per person, I want to go ahead and uh, let's do ethnicity as the color, because we're going to start to create a bar chart with this. So now we've got some numbers. That's kind of cool. OK. Um, we need to then make this a bar. Let's see if that, oh, if I can do quite what I wanted, size. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. We've got little bars here. We need to do some sort of column aggregation. So let's do fiscal month. Did I do fiscal year or fiscal month? I don't remember which one I dropped. Fiscal year. So again, it's doing that something. We don't need it to do it. So let's just change it back to a dimension. And then to discrete. Okay, this is starting to look a little bit better, but now it looks kind of flopped on its side. So let's pull fiscal year down to the rows. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Now, if you're at this point and you're like, oh, this is not working the way I need it to, and you kind of want to figure out how do I make this, how do I flip it on its head? You can go to show me and click on one of these charts. So for stacked bar charts, and it will automatically reformat it for you, which is super handy. <laughs> so you're not just poking around in Tableau trying to figure things out. Okay, so now we've got um, awards dollar rate per ethnicity per fiscal year. And this is a cool way to compare per fiscal year, but this is not quite what I was looking for. I wanted to compare the ethnicities um, per fiscal year. So instead of fiscal year being on the columns, I'm going to take it and drag it to my filters pane. And I'm gonna select all for now, just because I wanna, um, I wanna get it off my, my columns. And then on your filters pane, go up here and say, show filter. That will then allow you to see the filter itself on the side view. And then you can say, okay, I'm just gonna look at one at a time. So I'm gonna change this to a slider. And now we're looking at one, um, one fiscal year at a time. So I'm gonna go up to my 2022. You can just drag it all the way over. And now how do I unstack these? Okay, well, I'm gonna take the lazy way and go to show me again. And let's see if it will let me restack. Oh, here we go. Okay, so now I need to flip it again. So we're just gonna flip these here and flip those. Okay, and now my colors went away. Oh no. So now I'm just gonna drag my ethnicity back over to my marks and I'm gonna hover it over color. And that will then give me my branded colors that I already have programmed in my Tableau workbook. So that's how I set up the bar charts. And this is for um, the awards rate, dollar rate per person for fiscal year 22. Oh, look at that. That looks great because we're only three months into the fiscal year. If we go back to 2021, you'll see that one looked more like what Jamie was showing earlier in the presentation. Okay, and then finally, um, I want to show you how to set up a line chart. So I'm gonna give you a new worksheet. And real quick, let me just uh, remember what I did here. So I have recognition for the last 10 years. Okay, so I'm having them stacked. Okay, so I'm gonna try to recreate that. So what, we'll, what we want is 
Proposals, awards, and expenditures read over the last 10 years with each of the ethnicities a different uh, color line. So let's see if we can do that. We're going to go proposals rec, awards rec, expenditures rec, and I'm just using my control key on my keyboard to select those. I'm going to dump them into uh, next year. Okay, here's the aggregate totals. Now, uh, fiscal year is going to be uh, my, my access, axis. So I'm going to jump it into rows. Again, it's going to think it's a measure. We're going to change it to a dimension. You could also change fiscal year in here to a dimension in the, in the data panel. Uh, but I like to keep it as a, as a measure, just in case I need to do anything <laughs> um, with it. So we actually need to put these measure names into columns. Oh, I have these backwards. I apologize. Yeah, here we go. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We're getting there. All right, so measure values. Let's go up to our marks. And let's select line. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. So now we need to get our ethnicities. And they need to be colored. I'm going to do that. And then we also want to put them. Okay, okay it's getting a little crazy here. Oops. Okay. Let's see if we can expand this a little bit. So I'm going to go up to my cheat sheet again. There we go. Now we've got it looking more like what we did. Okay, so now we've got, oh, but they're out of order. That's okay, we can fix that. So we're gonna, we always do proposals first because that's how it starts. Then you get awarded and then you spend money on the award. So proposals, awards, expenditures. Okay, so now they're in order. Proposals, awards, expenditures, recognition. We've got our fiscal years along the bottom here. Tableau has automatically filtered that. Um, it says, okay, well, you only have data that starts in 2012. Um, so it tries to give you 2011 as a buffer. You can change that if you want, or you can leave it, it's up to you. And then it's going to also give a, a buffer on the other side too. So it says, oh, you only have data through 2022, but we'll give you a year buffer on this side. You can see our lines. And then the reason for this steep decline is obviously we're currently in the fiscal year 22, 2022. So we haven't had as much activity come through in the last two months than we will for the next eight months. So that's how I set up the line charts. And then of course you can add filters as you want. Another cool thing about the filters is instead of just dragging a field into filters and then clicking on the item to say show item to make it pop up over here, is if you, um, uh, excuse me, go ahead and click down on the, on the field itself and click show filter. That will do both of those steps without you having to drag and then click. So it just saves you a step. And then, um, you know, you can format your dashboard to be more user-friendly by using these as like drop downs, And then that way you can have more filters off to the side. Um, or if you want people to only be able to choose one at a time, you can do any of these single values. I also like to always select only relevant values and that will limit each filter based on the other filters parameters. That just helps uh, the user experience so they're not trying to click on something that doesn't have a value. Okay, so that is how I set up those three types of charts and how I worked with my data, my joined data here in Tableau. Um, so now I'll go ahead and pull up the chat uh, and answer any questions that might've come in or feel free to type in a question or a comment. Um, I don't see any questions yet, but I'll keep looking. Maura, this is Delia. Can I just mm -hmm. ask you my question out loud? Oh yeah, absolutely. So I uh, I appreciate this has been very helpful in terms of setting up the thing, the setting up the, the analysis in particular for Lyft, and that was my primary interest. Mm -hmm. I just would also want to um, advise all of us to think about how to interpret the table and how to make sure that we're being responsible in setting up the parameters. So for example, when we compare just by ethnicity mm -hmm. and race, we're not taking into account by discipline. And we know that STEM disciplines have many more Asians than white people at ASU, but broadly as in the field. 
and those awards are much larger. So it would make sense for us to take into account what is the field of discipline for the individual. So I hope a report like the, the one you presented and did for on behalf of Lyft um, is not, doesn't stop at that level of, of just gross measure or gross di um, dividing it up by ethnicity and race, but really takes into account what goes into these proposals. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for that. We did, as we discussed this with Lyft, talk about some of those things like discipline, you know, things we can't even measure, time commitments to other, you know, activities, mentoring. So there were a lot of factors that um, the data didn't show, but that we did talk about with Lyft to make sure that we were being very responsible in what the data was and what it is not. Right. But those things, the one things you mentioned, aren't really things that we capture in data. But what we do have in data are the fields and the disciplines. And so yes. responsibly, that's the way we should be reporting it, even if it's just being used as an example, like for this session. Otherwise, it gives people the impression that, oh, these groups really are far behind, but but it's not a fair comparison. So that really is, is my concern here. But I, again, I think this is wonderful. This is a great set of tools. And I love that we have you all as resources to help with these types of dashboards. Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, discipline and or I guess field um, is not really something that is easily found in any data systems here at ASU. I mean, we can kind of. But we know what college the investigators are in. Oh, sure. Yeah. So they're in engineering versus in literature or in English. We have those data. Yes. And on the on the report that we published, we had um, home college as one of the filters so that the users of the Lyft initiative could filter on that and say, OK, well, uh, you know, in, in College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, for example, their measure might be here versus engineering, it might be here. And we know that that's because of the discipline difference. But, but um, that's so exactly, that was my concern. So I work in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and we have souls, we have, you know, biology, we have chemistry, we have math, we have this, you know, all these other departments ref reflected in the natural sciences. The awards there are of a different quality and quantity than they are in our humanities or in our social sciences. So at minimum, we have the division of the investigator. And so college, is, I think, is still too gross a level. We need to drill a little deeper. Okay. Um, yeah, we have division in the data set. We just didn't put it on the dashboard, but um, I can talk with Jamie and she can talk with Lyft and see if that is something that they would like to make that change. It's really you know, a couple of quick clicks and we can add that in. And Thank you. It. And I'll reach out to Colleen and Jeffrey as well. Okay, awesome. Thank you for bringing that up. Any other questions? Okay, well, if there's no other questions, I'll turn it back over to Jason. All right, thank you, Maura and Jamie uh, for the presentation. It was a good blend of uh, a problem statement and then um, a solution using data to present that information. Um, very informative 